Hello friends and lovers, my name is Bernard Galati and I am the author of The Origin of Me, this one with the beautiful chicken and the golden egg on the cover, this beautiful cover design by Alex Ross which I'm very proud of. Welcome, um, welcome to this session, I hope that you and your family, your loved ones are all well, that you're all healthy and keeping things together in these um, troubled and uh, very unusual times. And I hope this session um, brings you a little bit of, um, brings a little bit of joy into your day. Um, the Origin of Me took a long time to write. It took 11 years to write, so it was a real labor of love. And I'm gonna share with you some of the secrets of it, how I came up with the idea and five little, uh, five little uh, interesting things Five little secret truths um, about the book itself. So where should I start? I guess at the, at the very beginning. Um, the origin of me, where the idea come from. When I was 13 years old, I went to a play called Metamorphosis by Stephen Burkhoff. He was directing it at the Nimrod Theatre, now, um, now uh, Belvoir Street. And I was just captivated by this play. Here's a picture. It's about Gregor Samsa, who... Oh, I didn't even tell you what the book was about. Let me tell you what the book was... What, what my book's about first. The book is about 15-year-old Lincoln Locke, schoolboy, who's going through a period of change. His mum and dad have separated, and he's been um, shifted from his old school on the northern beaches into a very elite private school in the eastern suburbs. Along with that, adding to, his, adding to his trouble, he's got a really tiny little growth, a little nub growing at the base of his spine, a little genetic anomaly going on there, which he's increasingly um, concerned about as it begins to grow in the story. Um, making the, making the, uh, the problem even more troublesome is the fact that he's been drafted into the swim squad. The book also has a dual narrative, which I'll talk a little bit about later on. So where did the idea come, come from? When I was 13 I went to a play called Metamorphosis by Stephen Burkhoff, adapted by ad adapted from uh, Franz Kafka's famous novella The Metamorphosis which was written in the early 1900s and I was absolutely captivated by the play. In the story Gregor Samsa wakes up one morning to find that he is transformed into an insect and it just horrified me and fascinated me in equal measure. At the time, my um, sexual, it was the time of my sexual awakening, I was realizing that I was not on the straight and narrow, that I was a little bit bent, a little bit, little bit gay, a little bit queer. And after I saw the play, I thought that the best option for me would be to repress that, to really push that down. 26, 20, uh, sorry, 16 years later, I actually had the opportunity of playing the part of Gregor Samsa in a college production. So I came full circle with that. And another, or oh, whatever, over 10 years later, that was the, the germ of this idea about my 15 year old character developing something a little extra. Let me just change the picture here. Whoa, let's not tear it. So when I thought about how I would do the book, I absolutely loved the Cole's Funny Picture book by Edward William Cole um, that he used to produce in the late 1800s. And I thought I would make the book a little bit like one of his, uh, one of the illustrations that he, that he stuck in his book. You can see it up there. It says, where is the giant? And if you turn the giant, if you turn the giant, let's see if that works. If you turn the giant that way, the picture that way, you can see the giant's face. So that was really my approach to the book. I thought a book. I thought I'd like to create a book that you have to kind of turn around and look at from different angles. A little bit of cryptic stuff going on there, and little hidden clues in the book. So everything is not um, as apparent as as it first seems. Um, I do have a dual narrative which I mentioned. So there's a, a narrative that's set in the 19th century and a contemporary narrative, and I wove those together um, in much the same way as a DNA molecule. So these are the two strands and connecting the two strands 
uh, the bands, and in the story, they're objects, they're, they're, um, they're artifacts that appear in both stories, and that, that they, they blend those stories together. Okay, let me tell you now about five of the, um, five of the interesting things that are real in the book. The first one is the tale itself. I'll just read one little passage from it. So this is when Lincoln has been um, drafted into the swimming squad. And he says, just after just a session coming up, when the final glockenspiel sounded, the dread of swimming at squad the next day hit me. And I went to Bondi Junction and bought a pair of black speedos. Though the fabric was smooth and sheer, I prayed they'd be dark enough to fully conceal the nub and save me from humiliation. Okay, the truth of this, I did go to swimming squad. The truth, I was premature. I didn't have a tail. I didn't have a little nub, I should say. No spoilers. Um, but I was very prematurely her suit. And I am to this day. And here's a little bit of a secret for you. It's a great device. It's an old one, but I still use it. This is called the Razorba. And this is used for removing, for shaving hair on the back. It's my probably my most indispensable item okay second interesting maybe not so interesting fact second little truth um this is about bert one of the characters bert is one of the fav my favorite characters that i wrote he's a hermit that lives nearby um in lincoln's neighborhood just down in uh, in darlinghurst and he has a junkyard and this is um from the first time that lincoln encounters bert and he hears Bert muttering away in, in his backyard. Big explosion down at Garden Island. Kaboom! Next thing you know, young Johnny's off to Korea on his Pat Malone. Quack wouldn't let me go because I had something, a little something extra. Rain cats and dogs that year, and myxomatosis on the bunnies. Rabbitohs won the premiership. Good thing old Bugs was a yank. Came on with the newsreel he did. Before the main feature he did. Yeah, what's up, Doc? So this character, Bert, he has like this stream of consciousness that he just verbalizes. And this is the first encounter with, um, with Lincoln. And that um, Bert character was created from a real fellow that I once met called Jack. I used to go to a, uh, a church youth group and we used to be quite loud and rowdy with high school students outside the neighborhood. And he used to come out and, go, and start having a bit of a rant and rave. And I, um, he, he inspired this character one time he invited us to come and visit his place and he took us in and he showed us on his wall a um, Nazi swastika, a flag that he had captured in Normandy um, in the Second World War and it just gave me a new understanding and a new respect for him and I, it just made me think a lot about people having stories that you don't know so I just once saw him as an old crank and then I saw this other side of him Okay, the third one is knitting. Lincoln and his friend Isa are involved in doing a collaborative art project and, and, and they, they're actually knitting a, um, a DNA molecule. And this is when they, um, this is when they first um, put up some knitting, when they do a little bit of yarn bombing. This is Lincoln talking. Despite my initial reluctance to go along with Isa's idea, I was enjoying the slightly subversive nature of the mission. The possibility of being caught was giving me a thrilling tingle, not unlike tonguing the terminals of a 9 volt battery. I went down to the corner and called out every car that turned into our street. Isa finished before any teacher arrived. That looks hectic, I said, inspecting her work. Well done, you. She took a selfie of us in front of the pole with her phone. Then, while I was walking one, taking one with mine, I spotted a car coming up the street. Um, so this is their project that goes on in the background of the story. It becomes quite important later on. And I am going to confess, I'm a little bit of a knitter and a little bit of a, uh, and can do crochet as well. And here to prove it is some little bits and pieces out of my um, knitting bag that I've left behind. There's a little flower. It's not very good. It's very got lots of holes in it. But these were little parts of projects that I did. And here is all my big bag I'll just show you a very big collection of wool. I've got my own sewing bag and what have you. Okay, where were we? Number four, King Henry. King Henry is a sculpture that is in the Labyrinth Gardens of 
the school that Lincoln goes to called Cressfield Academy. And Lincoln discovers, I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler, I don't think it will be, but Lincoln discovers the statue of King Henry in the middle of the labyrinth. I rubbed King Henry's snout once more to hear the spiel again. No wonder Millington Drake was proud of the beast. Beneath his right foot was a plaque detailing his measurements, right down to the 28th inch girth of his scrotum. I went behind the bull to check out his equipment. Sure enough, his balls were enormous, and like his snout and horns, were burnished gold by all the rubbing. I restrained myself, half fearing he might come to life and kick out my teeth, or that I was being filmed. So King Henry, the statue was based on a couple of statues in Sydney. Um, this book, The Origin of Me, is a bit of a love song to Sydney as well, has many of Sydney's iconic locations and lots of Sydney features that Sydney ciders will recognise. And if you're not from Sydney, that you'll be fascinated to go on, on a tour of Sydney as you, as you go through the book. This is a little sculpture I made of King Henry. Um, I made a few sculptures of some of the chief elements in the book. And it's based on a real sculpture called Il Porcellino that is at Sydney Hospital. Very famous sculpture that was first created in Venice, I think in the 1500s. Hey guys, the last, the last little nugget is the Velocipede. I've got to be really quick because my phone's ran out of storage. That's why I had that little hiccup. The Velocipede was a kind of merry-go-round that's pedal power that features in the book in Pemberton's Magnificent Emporium. And this is where they ride the Velocipede. This is the 18th century character, Edwin Stroud. The mechanism looks similar to a merry-go-round, with red and gold cycles replacing the horses for men and two-seater carriages for the ladies. At least that was the order of things when operating in Paris. But on the ride's first run in Sydney, my mother put my sister Lula and my brother Thomas in a carriage and claimed the cycle behind them. My father took the cycle in front and allowed me to lead the charge, though as I was only 11, my feet barely reached the pedals. And they go on to start pedaling and ride this thing round and round and round. This is a real thing and it still exists in La Musée des Arts Foraines in Paris. And I was lucky enough to go there and actually ride it, pedal it round. That was organised by my dear friend that lives in Paris called Louise. Shout out to Louise if you're watching. And it was one of the most delightful and euphoric and serendipitous moments in my life as as we all pedal faster and faster and release squeals of delight and laughter. Um, and I think moments like that now more than ever are needed in our lives. And I just want to thank you guys for um, joining me today. I hope that um, if you've read the book, it's provided you with a bit of escape. I'm getting feedback where people are saying they're loving having this moment to just release all the concerns for just a little while and escape with the book.